Good morning. How are you all doing? I hope you're well. I'm going to leave it a few minutes for people to find me. It's not always easy, as I found out yesterday. Let's hope all the technical problems are sorted out now with Facebook. Oh, yes, I am live. If you are hopping on and you're with me live, then please do say good morning. Let me know where you're coming from, um, where you're watching from. It's a really grey, rainy day here in Bristol, so you can see I've got every light going on. I've got candles, I've got uh, my lamps going, so fingers crossed you will be able to see easily what I'm doing. You should see my rig behind me, it's quite interesting. So please do let me know if you are hopping on and joining me live. It's always lovely to say hello. Hello Leslie, lovely to see you from East Yorkshire. Morning Ingrid, morning Karen, Gateshead gloomy, yeah, gloomy here too. Um, Suffolk Ingrid, how is it there? Probably similar. It's just so dark here today. It just doesn't feel like it's ever really gonna get light. How's everyone doing? Have you drawn out your robins? Are you gonna be drawing along with me or are you going to be watching this and then having a little go later? Um, or it's just something to do on a rainy day, then um, all of those are absolutely fine. It's lovely to see you all hopping on. Can't see any comments on my phone, so I'm having to look on my computer as well. Grey, yeah, it's really grey, isn't it? I heard there's going to be some snow later this week, so that's going to be really interesting. I do love a bit of snow until it starts stopping you doing anything. Um, whilst people are finding me, I hope you are, um, if, if anybody sees any comments that says I can't find you or you know where are you, what's going on, I'd really appreciate it if someone could say just keep refreshing your page um, because sometimes like yesterday I just didn't pop up on my um, new activity so that made absolutely no sense that even though I was doing everything um, so sometimes it's a little bit difficult to to find out, see more people are hopping on now. So it, people are starting to find me, that's great. If you're watching live, please do say hello. If you're watching on the replay, then please say hello anyway, um, because I'll be looking back through the comments and it's nice to kind of have that interactive. Ask away if you have any questions as we go along, even if you're watching on the replay, because I'll come back and have a look at those as well and answer as many as I can, because I really do want this workshop to um, move you forward if you're feeling a little bit stuck then this is a good opportunity to possibly get a little bit of inspiration because it's always lovely to draw with other people um, to see different tips and techniques that people use we're all very very different and if you can pick up some information during this workshop that will help you to become unstuck and move forward in your colour pencil journey then, then that's my job done. I'm really pleased with that. There are a few people that are completely new to colour pencils. Um, really, real, real beginners, just interested, seen a couple of maybe drawings and thought, oh, I wonder if I could try that for myself. So welcome to you too. I really wanted to make this workshop, although it's quite a complicated drawing, I wanted this workshop to just give you that inspiration, that, that feeling of motivation that you can achieve this even if we're just taking a few steps forward in these few days. So please don't put any pressure on yourself to think, well, mine doesn't look like that or I can't seem to do that. that this is what these workshops are all about, to be able to help you to move you forward and the last thing I want is for you to lose confidence and to feel overwhelmed. This is all about fun. I've I've been drawing in coloured pencils. I always kind of compare it to when my daughter was born and she's six in April. My goodness. Um, so, you know, I've, I've, I've been through a bit of a journey myself and I'm one of those people that does put a lot of pressure on myself and I like things to look how they should in my mind. And, and we all know as artists that doesn't always happen. And there's this awful amount of pressure that you put on yourself and, and you get put off and you might even stop, which... I think, you know, the only way to fail in anything is actually to not do it. So I'm here to encourage you to keep going, to practice, to feel inspired and to take the pressure off. Leave that to one side and actually enjoy the process. Enjoy where you are right now, because if 
you know, this situation in our world has taught us anything is that life is short. And actually, if we keep striving for perfection or the next best thing, then, you know, we're just wasting our life right now. And I want to encourage you to to stay joyful, to enjoy what you're doing, whatever stage you are at, and not to compare yourself to other people. You just compare yourself to yourself. I'm just going to check the comments again. And then I think we might get started. Good morning, Sandra. Lovely to see you. Hello, Anne. Where are you coming from? Um, I should know some of you by now, but I just get a bit confused. Good morning, Shirley. Lovely to see you. Hello, Beth. Lovely to see you. Yvonne, love your picture on your Claire wallet. Oh, there's a picture to see. Oh, I'll have to have a look at that later. Good morning, Yvonne. Lovely to see you. We've got quite a few new people in the group this uh, week or so. So it's really great to see some new faces. If this is the first workshop you've ever been to, I try and do these regularly every couple of months um, because they're just so much fun. It's lovely to get to know you a little bit and to chat. Uh, being an artist is a little bit solitary and drawing with other people is always so, so lovely. Um, let me just, oh, good morning, Leslie. Damp, damp, yeah. Damp Northumberland, very damp here, very rainy. I've got my conservatory door shut, otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear anything I'm saying. Um, oh, it's so lovely to see you all. Let me know where you are in your pencil journey. Are you completely new to this? Have you been drawing for a while? Um, are you feeling a little bit stuck? I've had quite a few comments recently about people that are la lacking in confidence. They've lost their confidence recently. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with the current situation because we've got this just low level of underlying anxiousness that's going around. And I think people are just feeling quite overwhelmed by things and maybe feeling a little bit uncertain about the future. And I think it makes you feel uncertain then in all aspects, it has a knock-on effect, doesn't it? It rolls into other aspects of your life. So um, I want you to um, take that away today. Let's put that to one side. Good morning, Nisha, lovely to see you. Rainy Liverpool, it's very rainy and cold here as well. Um, it's lovely to see some new faces and some familiar faces too. It's always great to see you guys. Amazing group that we've got here. Not new to pencils, just wanted to learn more. Fair enough. Um, and I think, you know, what does new mean? I've been drawing in graphite probably since I can remember. Um, but coloured pencils, probably used them again when I was at school. Um, but a different kind of level and a different... I don't know, different kind of... Um, a whole different material set. There's so much more on the market now than there used to be. Um, and... I think I've drawn mainly every day in in some capacity of pencils for the last six years, really. And I had a big gap in between from school. So um, a lot of people are coming back to it from a bit of a break. That seems to be quite a common story as well. Um, right. Are you ready to get started? Just a few little housekeeping things before we get going and start drawing our sweet little Robin's face. All oh, things are coming up on my phone now. That's exciting. Good morning, Carol. Wet and windy in Kent. Oh, yeah, here too. Oh, horrible. Um, so, yeah, let me know if you're just hopping on where you are in your coloured pencil journey. Um, a few little things. This workshop is to celebrate the opening of my new membership, but I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, and I'm going to be running a little competition during these three days because what I want to do is encourage you to implement the, the things that you're going to be learning in this workshop because I think if you pick up the information and then you start really putting pencil to paper, you're going to start noticing the difference. It's one thing learning in theory, but when you put it into practice, it's a whole different thing. So to encourage you to do that, I'm going to be running a little competition. So what I'd like you to do is if you like or love this video, then you get one entry into the competition, the, the wheel that I'm, that's why I keep doing that. I wonder what I'm doing. Um, one entry into the competition. If you comment on the video, even if you just say hello, then you get entered again a second time into the competition. And if you post your work in the group, or if you feel a bit nervous about doing that, uh, oh, oh, there's comments are flying up now, so I'm not gonna be able to see them. I'll come back to them in a minute. If you post in the group, if you feel confident, I want you to 
feel like you can. This group, I, it's just a lovely, lovely group of people. And I know you hear that all the time on the internet, but it is a really encouraging, lovely group of people. So it's a safe space for you to show your work. Um, no judgment here at all, just encouragement. That's that's what it's all about. Um, but if you don't feel confident enough, if you're very new to it, then please feel free to direct message me and I will count that as part of the competition. So what I'd like you to do is make sure that you put the hashtag because it just makes it easier to, for me to search for the entries because Facebook puts it in all different orders. Um, hashtag Robin1 and then for tomorrow, hashtag Robin2 for Thursday, hashtag Robin3, and then I can search and you'll be entered into the competition three times. So three chances to win. The prizes are one month's free into my new The Joy of Drawing membership. So you get a month's free, which will be great timing because it's perfect for the Christmas season. We're all hopefully having a little bit of time off work. So there's some projects, some juicy projects for you to get your teeth into over the Christmas break. Um, and the second prize is going to be a little bag of goodies, which is my favourite paper, um, what we're actually drawing on today. Um, I say favourite. There are so many good ones out there and there are so many more I want to try, but I keep going back to this one. So it's an old favourite, I'd say. It's my comfort zone paper and it's brilliant for all of the medium pencils that I use. It works well with water um, when I use watercolour pencils. Fantastic for graphite um, and colour pencils and pastel. Oh, I use pastel pencils on it. No, I haven't actually, but I think they would be okay. I generally use pastel mat for pastel pencils, but anyway, that's a different story. So my paper... A sharpener, my favourite sharpener, this m &R one, that's going to be coming to you. I have used, I want to say hundreds, definitely tens, 20, 30 sharpeners over the last six years. And this one is definitely my favourite. It's the one that's kept going brilliantly. And I'm either going to throw in a Tombow Mono, which is another couldn't live without tool, or possibly my kneadable eraser, which is in a bit of a chunk at the moment my fabric cast out another tool i couldn't live without so that's going to be a little goodie bag which is going to be on its way to you just in time for christmas for you to get started especially if you're new to it but if you're not then you can't have too many of those i don't think anyway um oh people are putting hashtag robin one brilliant um if you put the number one well, should we say the number or the words um i'll search for both that's absolutely fine um, put your hashtag Robin one when you post your um, your own pieces that you draw with me either today or you're going to have a week to catch up. Don't worry, you don't need to do it all today, all in real time. Love your colourful art on your wall. It's lovely, isn't it? It's um, actually my husband went through a stage of buying loads of art for some reason. And this is one of my favourites. Just so colourful and beautiful. And isn't nature amazing? So it just brightens up a plain wall. Um, I would say somebody wants to be in my video. I don't know what that means. It sounds a little bit interesting. Good morning, Margaret. Lovely to see you. Which paper is it? It's the De La Rowney Smooth Heavyweight. It's, um, what's the weight? It's £135 in weight, not in price. That would be ridiculous. But I think it's about £12 maybe, which is really reasonable for 25 pieces. It's a beautiful thickness. And so it's definitely a recommendation from me. Um, oh, lovely to see you all. Right, I think that's the housekeeping out of the way. Of course, I will say that again at the end. I think we should just get started. I've got lights going everywhere. So I'm going to flip my camera around. Um, I've got my my uh, light on my camera just because it's so dark here in Bristol but let me know if the shine is annoying um, because I've burnished some of those uh, robins. I'm going to grab my glasses and this is obviously the finished piece so I'm going to keep referring to that because I'm going to get through as much as I can during these workshops but I also want this to be about answering your questions and if there's anything that you would like to know. And also breaking it down, sip of tea, and making it as easy and straightforward as I can. So, um, can you see that okay? I can't really get any closer, maybe a tad. And I always start with, I don't know about anybody else, I always start with the trusty dark sepia pencil. 
The reason I do this and not go straight in for black is that black tends to smudge a little bit more than this one. See, there's quite a shadow with the light. Let me know if you can see. Hopefully you can. You can see well. Oh, thank you, Nicola. You're always a little star when it comes to my technology. I don't know what I do without Nicola. Um, right, so I'm going to start with the eye, as I always do. And another reason for starting with, well, one of the reasons, or the main reason for starting on the eye, is that I think it gives the drawing life. And I think if you can be encouraged to carry on, then this is one of the best ways, because... If you start on a patch of fur or feathers, sometimes you can, you know, lose interest quite quickly. So I'm going around the outline of the eye um, with my dark sepia pencil. I'm not pressing very hard at all. Just be careful. I've got paint on my hand. I've been painting my kitchen. I had a bit of a funny um, whim yesterday and we've had a new hob fitted and it makes the rest of the kitchen look really horrible so I decided to paint the cupboard doors yesterday late at night um, just one of those things but it's looking amazing um, so I'm going around the edge of the eye and just mapping that in you tend to find with your initial sketch that it can rub away or it can be a little bit off because I don't know about you, but I've seen, I've you know, drawn this out a few times now and every time it's, it's quite different. So I'm just going around the dark edges and being mindful of these lovely little details underneath. And the fact that we've got a beautiful highlight in the top of the eye, we want to leave that free. OK, so I'm going to just fill in the bottom section. I've sharpened all my pencils. I'm not sure if that was a good idea or not but I'm just using the side of the point. I'm not going straight in. I'm using the side of the point just to add a few layers of this dark sepia at the bottom of the eye. The important thing with most eyes is that you create a glassy look. You want them to be smooth. If they are grainy and you can see the tooth of the paper coming through, and the tooth just means the peaks and troughs of the paper. So when you add the pencil to the paper, you're aiming to fill up the troughs. When artists talk about layering, that's what they mean. You're filling in the troughs um, by adding layers and then that in turn gets rid of the graininess. If you like the graininess, then that's perfectly fine to keep it grainy. Um, but I prefer to be. Will there be a replay of this? Yes, there will. It'll be available in the group. Don't you worry. No plans to take that down. And I'm going to add it to the, I don't know what it's called now, units, maybe, section. I need to organise my Facebook group a little bit just so that it's easier to find. But if you do a search and just type in Robin, it should come up or Robin Day One. I put that as the description. So I'm very, very gently adding and you can see it's quite grainy still but we're just adding a little bit of detail it's going out of focus um, making sure that we're putting dark in the top as well because there's always a shadow at the top always when it comes to eyes and that's the eyelid so that's important that you put that in it really does make a big difference when it comes to the final look. I'm going in with the cold grey one now. I've decided for this drawing just to use polychromos. It doesn't mean that you have to go out and buy lots of polychromos, but I thought if I keep it simple and try not to use lots and lots of different brands, because in the past in the workshops when I've added the odd Pablo or Luminance, people have felt overwhelmed or inclined to go out and buy all of these pencils, and you don't need to do that. In fact, I think it's quite a good idea to get to know your pencils really well. So if you buy one set, first of all, get to know the colours, going in with the cold grey two now, then it just feels a bit easier. It feels less overwhelmed. I'm going to go in with the cold grey two on top of the dark sepia because I'm filling in the troughs that I talked about. I'm adding the layers. I want this eye to look beady and glassy. You might need to blow away some of the fallout. And to get a beady or glassy look, you need to fill in the layers. So it doesn't matter that it's a bit lighter than the darker colour because we've got lots more layers to go on this. Now, in the top of the eye, you might have noticed that there's quite a bit of blue just reflecting in the sky. I think this is a tree. I'm going to make it a tree, maybe a tree in the winter with absolutely no 
leaves on it or branches. Um, you can see a little bit of detail. And because this robin's quite small, we are limited to the size of the pencil tip for how much detail we can get in in one space. I'm just using the blue very gingerly. I'm not putting a lot in. Generally, less is more, I find. So you just want a hint of it. The other little tip I'd say is put it on the edge of your dark bit underneath. So you'll see a hint of it, but it won't fill in the hole. We don't want this catch light to be completely full of blue. So this is the ultramarine. There's only two blues that I picked for this one. Um, and then I'm going to go in with the... Helio Blue Reddish. Wow, that's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? And I'm going to add, I always find it helps to add just a couple of colours. Even if you only see one, I would add two just for depth. So it's not always about drawing exactly what you see. Sometimes it's about just adding your little spin on it. And I think that's what makes it really interesting. Hello, Lillian. Lovely to see you. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm going to go in now and build up through the greys. Uh, I'm actually going to go in with a Payne's grey at the bottom of the eye and start darkening up this bottom section. So just being a little bit careful not to go out of your lines. It's very, very easy to do that. Um, but what you'll do is you'll end up with a really big eye, even if it's just a pencil width, a pencil tip width. And it will look odd. I've done that with a few drawings in the past and I've gone outside of my lines or I've drawn the eye too big to begin with and it just looks a little bit odd. Um, and sometimes, oh, I've snapped my lid off there. Sometimes um, it takes a while to realise what it is that's making your drawing look odd. So I'm darkening up the top of the eyelid, that shadow we talked about. And then I'm darkening up this bottom section by using small circles, light hand, and just filling in the gaps. You'll find with most drawings, like especially with little birds, it's an awful lot of detail in a small area. And so you're working on one bit for ages and you don't feel like you're getting anywhere. Oh, I'm glad you're good, Lillian. Lovely to see you. Right, we're going to leave the eye for now just because we need to come back to it when we add black. But as I said, black tends to smudge quite a lot. And so we leave that until we're not really going to be doing much more around the head because you'll tend to find that you'll get like a makeup smudge on your robin, which you don't want. So I'm going to start on the uh, beak now and start to fill in some of that. Um, I'm using the cold grey one. I always think that's quite a good base layer. And another massive tip I would say is if you're really feeling a bit nervous about what colour to use or where to begin on a certain section, then putting pencil to paper is the best thing that you can do. And I know that sounds really, really obvious, but actually getting that pencil down and the way that you can do that is by using a light colour. You haven't committed to much. You can lift it back up, you can cover it up, but you've started, you've got going. And I think sometimes that's the hardest part, you know, taking that first step forward. So if in doubt, use a really light colour, either a, a, an ivory, a cold grey one, a warm grey one, any of those, but you're putting pencil to paper and you're getting yourself started. The, the beak needs to be smooth, just like the eye. So this is important again to fill in the tooth, to get rid of any graininess. Oh, it just feels so Christmassy, doesn't it, to be drawing a robin? They are so sweet. They've got such beautiful little faces and they've got such character. So I'm just adding that cold grey all over. Good morning, Catherine. How are you? Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you this morning. I'm going to hop straight up to the cold grey three because the cold grey two is not that much different to the cold grey one. A little bit, obviously, but not much. So I'm going to add the cold grey three into the darker areas that I can see. There's a dark part under the beak. 
Now be careful here because it's again a tiny area. All depends on how big you've drawn your robin. This is probably one of the smallest robins, actual robins I've drawn because I wanted to get the composition of the holly in. Um, I didn't want it to be too big. And also the smaller we draw something, the quicker it is. Get that little hook on the end of the robin's beak, but we don't want a big hook. I've done that before where I've drawn a... Uh, the hook's been too big and it's looked like a <laughs> it's like a hawk or something. It just looks a bit strange. So I'm just mapping in where these little parts are at the top. There's some darker parts here, a little triangle. The other thing is to not sometimes not think about what you're drawing. That can be very overwhelming. Instead, just look at it as a series of colours and shapes. As soon as your brain kicks in and starts to make sense of what you're drawing, then sometimes that can lead to you just switching off. big example of this is when you're drawing portraits and you try and draw um, a nose or if you're trying to draw hands and they end up looking like sausages. It's because your brain has tried to work out what, you know, I know what a finger looks like, I'm going to draw it, or I know what a beak looks like. And actually... <laughs> Um, it's almost like you're pushing it. It's too hard. It's it's too much force. And I think when you push for something, um, it tends to almost resist you. I think if you go into more of a relaxed state of mind where you are just thinking about the shapes that you're drawing, the colours that you see, um, and let the drawing emerge, let it just come out of what appears to be nowhere. You know, the longer I've drawn, the, the, the more I work on my art and work on my mindset, you know, it's an ongoing thing, the more I realise that if I slow down and relax, it's so much more enjoyable, and that's what it's all about, really. Um, I'm trying to draw from above. I really want to draw from below, but I don't want to cover up what I'm drawing. So I'm just going to <laughs> try to do the best I can around my camera, around my phone. Adding the little nostril in at the top. There's that dark triangle. Again, it doesn't really make any sense, but it's a triangle. It's there. So I'm going to put it in. doesn't matter if it makes any sense. It will do eventually. Having faith in the method... Sorry, you're late. Oh, no problem. No problem, Heather. Lovely to see you. Um, couldn't find the link. Oh, yeah. A lot of people are saying, oh, where's the link? for? But it's actually just in the group. So you don't need any links at all. I should just pop up. Um, it might take a little while because you've got to keep refreshing your page. But I should just pop up. I'm just adding this little bit around here. Let me know if you're drawing with me. I'd love to know. I want to keep track of the comments a little bit. I'm just looking to see on my screen what you can see. Right, so we're getting there with the beak. This is the cold grey five. I'm going to go up to the Payne's grey. And I'm going to add a little bit into that little nostril. So darkening that, darkening that triangle I keep talking about. And then I'm going to darken up next to that line in the middle. That's really dark. So just darkening that a little bit. And then this shadow underneath, there are sections to it. There's a highlight in the middle. It's quite tricky to leave that free. But if you can, do. Because even if it's a bit smaller than it is in, in your photo, because it will add depth to the beak so I'm just as I said layering up darkening up filling the layers um, just watching enjoying the process um, my drawing coloring has been very moody lately oh has it is that how you're feeling Anna or are you um, feeling that kind of vibe um, I saw your beautiful fox though your autumnal fox it was beautiful Anna is very very clever with her um, 
you know, she'll take some line art and she'll turn it into this beautiful, beautiful thing that you just wouldn't imagine. It just emerges stunning. I'm going back with the ultramarine and I'm just adding a little bit of blue to the end of the beak and going along the dark parts as well with this ultramarine. What that's going to do is tie the two areas together as well. And I'm just going to add a little bit up here. Again, we don't want a lot, but it just adds to it. And I need to tidy up my edges. And I'm going to go in with, sometimes if I want it to show up, I'll go in with the kind of the opposite of the greys. So in the polychromos, you've got a beautiful selection of greys. You've got your um, cold greys, one to six, and then your warm greys, one to six. And if I want, if I've been using cold greys like I have here, I'll go in with a warm grey just to um, make it show up, really. You're using a different kind of grey, a different colour. And it doesn't always, um, you know, it's not one or the other. Sometimes they work so well together. So I'm darkening up. Need to darken up along that midline. Need a steady hand here, which I actually don't have at all. I've got a really wobbly hand. Um... There's a little line that I didn't notice on the front. Just going to add that. And then what I want to do is tie, tie that in together. And I'm going to be been a bit overwhelmed with life in general. My current mood should be brought. Oh, Anna, cancel my plans. Oh, dear. That's, yeah, completely understandable. It's a really crappy situation at the moment, isn't it? Sorry to hear that, Anna. I hope you enjoy this workshop today and it lifts you a little bit, just a little bit if I, if it can. Um, going in with the cold grey over the top because I want to smooth this beak out. I don't want it to be grainy in any way. I can add a little bit of light over dark, not much with coloured pencils. They don't tend to work in that way um, as easily. Obviously it depends on the paper that you're using. But if you think that you can't really do it as a general rule, I think that helps. And then you're pleasantly surprised if it shows up a little bit. Um, so I'm smoothing everything out with the cold grain, pulling it all in together. And then I am going to go in with the black and add to the darkness of that bottom section. And I want the midline to show up. Gosh, I've just noticed all of this paint showing up on my fingers and my thumb. I'm sorry about that. I get these little urges and I think, oh, I'll just do it now. I don't really think it through. Probably wasn't the best option. Um, but I've had really, really loads of colds in the last few weeks and I've been feeling really ill. And so when I'm not feeling ill, it's like, oh, oh, I've got some energy again. Amazing. And then I go a bit overboard. Right, so adding the nostril, adding a little bit of darkness into that nostril. So that stands out a lot more. And then we're going to soften it with a, I'm going to do the cold grey, oh no, it's the warm grey, cold grey four, the cold grey four, that's what I think will work. So next to these dark parts, there's usually a mid-tone. It doesn't really go as a general rule stripey from highlight to dark there's usually a mid-tone in between there's a lot of light shining on this beak so i'm hoping you can can see it okay adding that mid-tone at the top just pulling that top part of the beak in and then i think we will leave it there and start going into the feathers on the top so I really want to get in as much as I can during this workshop. We're going to go in with the cold grey two to begin with. Should I no, lift it up or take it down a little bit? Can you still see it? Top of the head. I'm going to add the cold grey two all over. Now, normally I would take out this top line. I would use my kneadable eraser, and I'd probably encourage you to do that. Just dab away the pencil, the graphite underneath, 
but because I want you to see it and I want it to show up, I'm going to leave mine there. So I might have a little bit of a line showing through, but that's OK. So this is all about kind of trying to show you how to get the texture in the feathers. So I'm using a base layer of the cold grey too. There's a much lighter section here, so I'm going to leave that. I'm going to move that over there a little bit so the shadows change. Um, I'm just going to look at my screen. That makes sense. Perfect. Right. So adding a layer of the cold grey too all over coming down into his little face. There is a nice transition between the orange, which we're gonna put in, and the gray. So I'm just adding a layer so I can see where that is. It's really funny, because obviously this is the second time I've drawn the robin. I drew it so people could see, and I've actually filmed the whole thing, and it will be going into um, both of my memberships. I've got a, an art and mindset membership and I've got um, this new Joy of Drawing membership. So it's going to go into both the, the full six hours um, where I'm kind of talking along. So it'd be interesting to see how I tackle it differently because this is the second time I've drawn it and I think sometimes you... Well, obviously, let's hope you learn every time you draw. I'm going in with the cream now just adding a layer of light and there were a few sections in the in in the other drawing that I possibly struggled with and thought oh that's not really the look I wanted how can I change that how can I work around that and so this time I wonder if I fall into the same traps again hopefully not so this is the cream I'm adding a base layer to start to fill in the tooth using the side of my pencil, so I'm not going straight in, and I'm using circles, so I'm using ovals really, I should say. But what you tend to find with this is that you get a more even coverage down. I would take away that line as well. I wouldn't keep that in. Mine's gonna look like it's got a gray outline around it, but that's okay for the filming. So I'm working up into the face. There's quite a lot of darkness around the beak and there's quite a lot of shadow around the eye. I just want to get this light layer in. And then I'm going to go in with a slightly darker colour. I think I'm going to keep it light. I think with the, the um, this one, so the original drawing, uh, I went a little bit too dark. Um, I need to darken it up because you need the shadows, but I'm wondering, every time I try or start a new drawing, I try and think of the objective that I want to do for the new drawing for this next one. And generally, it's softness, it's taking my time, and in this case, it's going to be lightening everything up. So I'm going in with the cadmium orange, and I'm starting to, instead of another base layer of circles, I'm going to start to bring in the feather texture, the feather... Um, direction, the length of the feathers, whether there's more shadow. I'm starting to think about all of these things and I'm using tiny little lines. Again, not straight in. I'm holding it to the side and I'm trying to be mindful of not covering up what I'm drawing. So I'd probably be holding it a little bit further down. Um, but I'm using little dashed lines and starting to add a little bit of colour. Um, coming around the eye and then coming down under the eye. There are lots and lots of different shadows in here. But instead of pressing harder or possibly straight away working up through the darker colours, I'm actually going to just go over the same area a couple of times just to build up these layers. There's a lot of texture down here and there's a lot of texture around the edge around here. So I'm starting to map in where the feathers are. There's some longer ones down here. Another tip for realism is to try and not make it too symmetrical. We want it to look like there are little flyaway feathers and little bits that are sticking out. Um, the imperfections on something are what make it much more realistic 
um, funnily enough. So the more little details that you put in, I think it really benefits from it. So adding these little lines. Is anyone drawing with me? It'd be lovely to know. Um, let me know if you are or whether you're just watching along and you're going to draw later. So I'm going to add more of this cadmium orange. There's a little stripe here that's quite bright yellow, so I'm going to leave that bit out. I've mapped in where the darkest parts are and I'm going to start to fill in the middle sections around that. So if I were to leave this drawing, you don't tend to be able to finish coloured pencil drawings in one sitting. Um, very, very, I don't think I ever have. I was going to say very rarely, but I don't think I ever have. Um, so when you come back to it after a break, you should be able to see where you're, where you've left off, which section you're going to work on next and all of that kind of thing. The computer's making funny noises. So I'm just adding these feather textures in, starting to build up. I'm going to move up through some different colours. I'm going to go in with the burnt ochre and start to add the shadow sections in a little bit more and slowly start building it up. There's a dark part under the eye. That's going to take a lot more pencil, a lot more layers, different colours. I'm going to add the darkness around this section of the eye because that's quite dark. So what I tend to do is think about where the highlights are. Make sure you're not going over those because you won't really be able to lift them back up again. Uh, not with coloured pencils. It's, it's like the opposite of painting in acrylics or oil paints where you work from dark to light. This is the opposite. So you're working from light to dark and leaving out if you're working on white paper you leave the highlights basically free of color but most things aren't as light as white um, and actually this paper is not even completely fully white so um, usually you add a couple of layers just not not as many as you do for the rest of it so i'm adding this fur texture another thing that I uh, another little tip with drawing feathers I generally do this with textured fur as well is that instead of just going in one direction with your pencil I actually crisscross and what that does is it creates natural looking clumps of feathers or fur if you look at your reference photo you'll see that the feathers don't look perfectly groomed and the same with fur they're not all going in one direction they're generally forming clumps of fur and I think sometimes when people are struggling with fur or feather texture that's it it's it looks too groomed it looks a little bit too fluffy whereas if you crisscross you'll start to notice that there are these natural points, these little triangles that become, um, that just naturally formed with your pencil going backwards and forwards. And then you can build on that. It's something to build on with the shadow. It's just different ways of holding your pencil, of, of using your pencil, just to create these different textures. So I'm going back in and adding the shadows. It's quite dark where it meets the grey, which hopefully we're going to get done. What time is it? Quarter past 11. Um, I was aiming to draw for about an hour today, each day, but we might run over slightly. I usually do. But if I aim for an hour and a half, it goes on to two hours. Um, so I thought an hour and it might go just over. So I'm just darkening up with this burnt ochre. Beautiful, lovely, natural colour. Darkening up the darkest parts that I can see. Now I've added these colours in. Can you see that the eye and the beak are now looking a little bit more washed out? So sometimes at the beginning you think, oh gosh, I've gone too dark and... Or maybe gone, not gone dark enough because you've been a little bit nervous about going dark. But what you'll find is that you probably need to go a lot darker than you think you do. Right, I'm going to go in with the 
uh, Naples yellow, and I'm just going to start to fill in the deep the gaps. Going in with the mid tones, I want to go in with a lighter colour. I don't want to go in with my. I just use the, use the burnt ochre. I want to keep everything nice and light. So this eye to me now looks like it needs an awful lot more because we haven't added our black yet. It's going to need a bit more. So using this Naples yellow into this section of the this little bit underneath there's quite a lot of yellow in this side we just add that in keep it nice and sunny and I'm using that crisscross so you can go down 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 and then cross 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 or you can do the little crosses as you go but that tends to just give a little bit more texture. Also, you're getting yourself that kind of muscle memory into the feeling of what these feathers might look like or feel like if you touched them. And so that kind of translates down through your hands without thinking it through too much. So that's looking a bit brighter. We're getting there. I'm going to go in with the... What's this one? cadmium orange again building up this section is going to have to be a lot darker than we've got it right now but I just want it to stay nice and orange that crisscross making sure we're darkening up into this section a little bit more and then leaving that stripe although it's not completely yellow we will add a little bit of orange and generally even in a shine because a shine isn't a different colour, it just means the sun's bleached it out and it might you know, reflect different colours. Usually there's a dark colour within that shine. It's not just bleached out. And what that tends to find is pull it all together, it's much more cohesive and it just looks a lot better. Right, what colour do I need now? Just looking, I think I might need to go in with a little bit of a lightish brown. The Bista seems to be the one that's popping to mind at the moment. That's usually me. What's that, Anna? What did I say <laughs> at that time? What did I say? Um, I'm drawing, oh, good, Leslie, using the Windsor and Houston equivalent to the Dana Rainey. It's too soft. Oh, is it? does it feel a bit watercolour pencil -y? You know, when you push and it's like spongy. That's quite tricky, isn't it? You're struggling to keep up, Marion. Don't worry, don't panic. Um, I'll slow down a little bit. Do you have any questions so far about what I've been doing? Uh, watching, taking notes, do join later, pencils and liner ready to go. Oh, lovely Ingrid. Um, let me know, please do ask questions. No question is too small. There's no wrong, silly questions. Please do let me know if you want to me to go in a little bit more detail with things but now what I'm going to do is look at the reference photo and I can see around the beak here there's quite a lot of shadow there's quite a lot of shadow here and underneath a little bit on the top and then this bista is then going to go up into the head so what we're trying to do is create form so to be able to create form and make this go from a flat piece of paper to something that looks a little bit more 3D is to create these dark areas with light areas next to it. And what that does is it pushes the shadowed part back and it brings the highlighted part forward. So always like things like under a wing, there's going to be a shadow and then that looks like it's standing forward because there's a lot of highlights. It's all an illusion and you can see that with the berries as well. Just the fact that I've left a little line there, that's all it is, a line of light, it's made it look like it's round. It's all an illusion. So it's amazing how just a little line can make all the difference. It's shredding a bit. Oh, no. Oh, struggling to keep up. Oh, shall I slow down a little bit? So... I'm anxious to try and get as much um, as many techniques kind of shown as I can in the time that we've got. So going in with the Bista now, and I'm just using the little dashy lines to come up 
next to the eye and create that little bit of shadow. That's really frustrating when your materials are working against you. It's really frustrating, um, which is why I think I'd always recommend this paper. I just think it's a re it's not obviously the perfect paper and there are much more expensive ones um, or, you know, ones that are much more specific to certain materials like pastel mat and um, drafting film is amazing for certain things, but you do struggle with it with others. And and I think it just takes all of the enjoyment out of it. Um, it makes it really tricky. So if there is a material that's not particularly expensive, that, oh, press too hard. That's definitely one of my bad habits. Um, then it just makes your job a lot easier when, when the paper is working with you. Glad I'm not the only one out at all. Um, morning, late, but we'll watch again later to catch up. Oh, lovely to see you, Jennifer. Um, I'm adding this bister into the shadow. I'm going to add the bister to the top where it meets the grey. And a little bit there. There's quite a lot here. And here. And then I'm going to add some under the little beak, darkening this up. You can use little scribbly, li little scribbly lines, little scribble technique. Um, basically, you're doing tiny, tiny, you know when we did the base layer where we used big ovals to get a, a even layer down? What you're doing then is just adding um, the same thing, but in a much smaller area. So you're using tiny little circles, little scribbles, to almost glaze over the top so you're darkening an area but evenly around the eye as well a little bit here so we want to make sure that we've got that part on the outside of the eye that stands out all of these little details add up to create the expression on the robin's face so he could look a little bit angry at times or um look a bit happier i think my my robin in my first drawing looks a little bit a little bit angry um full of character so i'm coming down i'm doing the crisscross with the bister now so i'm building up through my layers So how many layers have we added to this now? We've had our ivory, or did we use our cream? Our cream, we've used the light cadmium. We've used the burnt ochre. We've used the yellow, and now we're using the bista. So you can see how they add up. And we're still not really anywhere near the depth of colour that we need. I'm just darkening up around here now, coming up around the edge. I'm keeping my pencil nice and soft, so little flicky lines towards the top, and that will then blend into the grey and brown part that we've got. Would you use Bristol board? I used to use Bristol board, actually. I, um, I've used a couple of different ones. I've used the vellum, and I've used the airbrush. I didn't like the airbrush at all. That was way too smooth and you just couldn't get any layers in. The vellum I really liked. I use the Strathmore Bristol board, but there's, um, what's the other Bristol board? Is it Stonehenge or, I can't remember. There's quite a few out there. Um, but I really liked it. I think it's probably one of my, it's probably my second favorite. There's also the Fabriano that a lot of artists use. That seems to have changed a lot over the last couple of years. I think they've changed the either the way they make it or the was it ingredients or it's just the texture is very, very different. It's uh, It takes a while to get used to it, I would say. There are two sides. One side is a little bit uh, more crisscrossy 
and you can see that as you draw and one side's a little bit smoother. I've been through stages where I absolutely love it. It's much more expensive. Um, I have Strathmore. Yes, I really like it, Leslie. I think that's a really good, good paper. And then I did a drawing on, on it recently and I, I struggled with it. Again, it was a little bit of a fight. So that's the Bista. I'm going to go in with the... Oh, beautiful. But morning, Lisa. That's my big sis. How you doing? <laughs> nice to see you. Um, orange glaze, perfectly named. So we're going to add a little bit of an orange glaze. I'm going to use the side of the pencil. And I'm going to go over the top. Now, glazing is a good way to get an even layer of colour down without completely overriding the colour and the texture that you've already put in. So that's the last thing we want to do. We've added all of these layers. We certainly don't want to lose them. So if you use the orange glaze, then you can just use a light hand, big circles like we did with the base layer. And we're adding this lovely orange colour to the whole thing without losing the pencil strokes. And I do this all the time with my drawings. If your fur is looking a little bit uh, spiky or, or too textured or you can really see the pencil strokes and you, and you don't like it, um, completely different if that's the look you're going for. But if you don't like it, then glazing over the top with a lighter colour, like the cold grey one or the warm grey one, it will just soften the pencil strokes. And what it will do is it will pick up a little bit of pigment on the end of your pencil and spread it out a little bit. So you end up with a much softer look, which I, I definitely prefer. I'm going to go in with the nugget now. What is your opinion of using Strathmore Bristol Board Smooth? Um, I preferred the vellum, I think. I think I used the smooth as well. So I used the airbrush the smooth. I wanted a bit more ability to layer. And I don't think I could get it with the smooth as much as I could the vellum. I think the vellum is a little bit more like this, which is what I, um, what I seem to get on well with. Uh, but you don't, you know, it's such a matter of opinion. You don't need to put as many layers as I am. You certainly don't need to. And sometimes drawings don't call for it. Sometimes they work brilliantly with just a few layers. And it depends on the colour of the thing that you're drawing. And so sometimes the paper works beautifully for one project and then it doesn't for the next. And that's because it's, it's different colours or a different texture. As a general rule, just using the nugget now, or the nougat, just to map in this frilly bit of shadow. This is the bit that moves, obviously when it, the bird moves its head, it kind of needs to make anatomical sense. Um, and this can be a little bit tricky because you don't want it to be too dark. You prefer the vellum too. Uh, is that because of the layers? Is that because of the layers that you can get in? So I'm going to add this nugget to the top as well. And I'm going to add that little ring around the eye, which I'm going to forget if I don't put it in. There's a line there. Just going to add that in. This whole thing needs darkening up, definitely. I'm going to... Am I going to take the flash off? Let me just see if that's better. Is that better or worse? Let me know. Can you see more clearly the colours with the flash off? Or would you prefer it on? Um, it's a bit much of a muchness for me. I think the shadow's a bit darker. I'll put it back on again. Yeah, the shadow's definitely darker with it off. I just feel like with lights on it, it's not showing it as it actually is in real life. But it's just such a dark day. It's darkening up around the edge here again, darkening up this little bit. And 
and then darkening up around the beak. The other thing to watch is that you want the beak to look like it's part of the drawing. You don't want it to look like it's just been stuck on. And to do that, it's just about getting the shadow. Where is that beak creating a shadow? And making sure you're adding that in a little bit as well. Darkening under here, there's some little lines and areas that are darker, just adding those little details. Better like that, what, with the light on? Should have been a bit more specific. <laughs> light on, light off. Um, it's darker. Oh no, you're all saying better, and I don't know which one's better. Better light on or better light off? Using the orange glaze again. And I'm going to fill in the mid tones, so the little yellow bits, just wanting to again soften the pencil strokes and just pull it all together. Like it is now. Oh, thank you, Nicola. Brilliant. Yeah, the shadow was just too, too much. And just adding a little bit to that. Right, what's going on here? It looks like its head stopped here, but it's not. So we're going to add a little bit of orange here. There's some little flyaway feathers, which are really cute, just around there. Uh, making sure that we are adding a little bit of orange and it's not just disappearing and its head stops here. We're just adding a bit of that. So I'm going to go back in with the cream, which is a really yellowy cream. So if you want a whiter cream or a whiter colour, then the ivory is better. So I'm just going to go up to the top, soften the pencil strokes here. All along here, that lighter part, and here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to the top. Now we've got most of our orange in. Then we're going to add the greys and the browns at the top of the head, and then we're going to go back in and hopefully today finish or mainly finish the, the face. So cold grey two again, start to add little textures up here. Just bearing in mind, it's not the same all over. This part's a little bit lighter and then it kind of goes in clumps again. So that crisscross method works brilliantly at the top. This part's all light, but it's dark around the eye. So adding that in as well. Again, I would take out your pencil lines a little bit more than I have. Some people like to print out the line art and draw directly onto it, in which case, obviously, the lines won't disappear, but they also won't smudge away. So there's definitely pros and cons to both. Just added a bit of cold grey there. Working my way up to cold grey three, and uh, looking to see where the darkest parts are adding these little lines in. This should be fairly quick because it's actually a tiny, tiny little area. She says, is that the last famous words? Nothing about coloured pencils <laughs> is quick. Um, and I think if you embrace them for that, if you really think about the reason that you do your art, is it to quickly rush through... Um, and create something quickly, which is absolutely fine as well. I like to do that with paint. That's a much quicker way of, of expressing yourself about getting your creativity out. If it feels like it needs to just burst out of you um, in an array of colour. But coloured pencils for me are a way for me to slow down, to, to stop and to breathe and to not rush. I feel like life is so rushy most of the time. So this is my chance to just take a breather. And I don't want it to be, you know, I'm not saying that sometimes you get to a part of a drawing, you think, oh God, this is getting on my nerves. I'm using a light table. So the line art is underneath the paper. Oh, using a light table. A light table. What a good idea. So your drawings lit up all the time. Ooh, well, that would stop the shadow, wouldn't it? Well, I'm going to have to look into that. God, it'd be perfect for the winter as well, wouldn't it? Because that's always a struggle. Because sometimes your 
drawing looks okay, but you can't see the colours that you're picking. I'm going to go in with the... I put my bister down. Oh, there it is. Bister. And add some brown to the top. A little bit here as well. And I want some brown around the edges to integrate the orange and the brown. Just bearing in mind again that it's not all over. There are some brown parts and there are some grey, <coughs> excuse me, grey parts. And we're still working in quite a small area, so you're only limited to what you can put in. A little line there as well. It's just integrating that. We definitely need to go darker into the face. Adding a bit more grey. Work up to the four. Yes, lift up so I don't have to trace the drawing. Oh my God, that's ingenious. Ooh. So the drawing is underneath. How amazing is that? I think that's what Leonardo da Vinci used to do. He used to use a light something like box or see the edges of my drawing are being covered up quite well because it's gray but over here that's going to show up quite a lot so just using little pencil strokes to add the texture it's looking a little bit patchy at the moment it's like he's got old patches here so i'm just going to keep going keep layering up the top as well. This section by the eye, that's quite grey and it's quite fluffy. So I want to make sure I get that in. And there's definitely a defined line. I'm going to do what I said before, which is soften everything. 80 light box from Amazon. Amazing. Um, cold grey one. I might have to have a look at that. So glazing over the top with the cold grey one, this softens the pencil strokes, spreads a little bit of the pigment and pulls it all in together. I like it to look soft. Textured, but soft, if that makes sense. And I find that that works well. Um, it tends to soften everything up nicely. I'm going to go in with the warm grey six because, like I said, sometimes I want the alternative grey to be able to show up a little bit. So I'm going to add that in in sections just sparingly. I'm not going in too hard, but it just shows up a little bit more than if I stuck to the cold greys. I think they work really well together. I'm just adding a little bit here. We want that line in. It's quite a defined line. It's all broken up though, so don't just draw a straight line. Broken up there. That's quite dark. We can go in with this warm grey to glaze as well into the darker parts. There isn't, I've drawn a light part here and there isn't one. So I'm just going to fill that in. See what I mean about making look a little bit angry? So darkening up the face a little bit, we can use this warm grey whilst we've got it out. We can add those little lines in here, little texture lines. So they show up really well with the warm grey six. Adding some scribbly lines or those tiny little circles we talked about to darken up around the beak. We can also use the dark sepia for this. So I tend to use the dark sepia or the warm grey six. And that tends to work really well. You might think, oh gosh, it's going a little bit too dark. Doesn't feel comfortable, but you are going to add mid-tones on top as well. Generally, when people say, oh, it's not looking right, um, it's because you probably need to go a little bit darker than you feel comfortable doing. That eye now looks really light. It looks quite strange. A little bit of this warm grey into this section, which is textured. And then I'm going to go in with the cadmium orange and just start to add a little bit more of that mid-colour in again just to pull everything in soften what we've just done with the warm grey six to pull it all together add orange in where i've missed orange out 
Add a little bit under the beak. That line I've drawn of light is just a little bit too big. And we want this orange to be a little bit darker there. We're going to smooth out that shadow. So again, glazing over the top. It looks quite dark on the screen, but actually it's a lot lighter in real life. I think what I might do is take a little photo of this and put it in the group so you can zoom in. You might not want to, <laughs> um, but hopefully you'll be able to kind of pick apart what I'm doing, actually, which pencil strokes are here and there. And um, it's nice to be able to just see it broken down. Right, we're getting there, I think, with the colours. Now we've added these parts in, I'm going to darken up the face because it, it just really needs it. And I think the only way to do Ooh, any way to do that is the black so I'm going to go in with the black because we're not going to add that much more to the face now and I'm going to definitely darken up this beady eye and you see the difference when this eye just pops out and the black is um, it just stands out it's one on its own so circles I'm burnishing a little bit now so I'm pressing a bit harder and the polychromos generally are quite forgiving with this because they are a, a quite a, um, quite a hard lead. Make sure you darken up the top as well and you get that shape around the top. Darken up here. You might need to add a little bit more shadow in the eye than you had originally comes up a little bit further look at that eye popping out now it really does make such a difference when you start adding the black so I'm just going to add that tree in the only problem is with the light it's going to sh shine off it a little bit so I'm going to add the midline of the beak in black and that will stand out it doesn't matter if it's wiggly because actually it is a bit wiggly I want to darken up that end of the beak a lot more than it is now. So darkening up that. Coming down and adding a bit here. We can always go back over the top with like a cold grey. Adding a bit more to the nostril. And then we'll go back in with the mid-tones. Just darkening up here. Got a real light section here which is not not really there so I think I might go back in with the warm grey in a second you see how that really darkens everything up I'm going to go back in with a cold grey first of all a cold grey four I'm just going to fill in that weird light part that I've left out I'm going to darken up above that shine and I'm just going to pull those two shines together and add to that shadow there's a dark part at the end of the beak. And then I'm just going to soften down here. Just so it doesn't look stripey, which is how I've got it now. Um, that eye is still a little bit wrong. I want to add the... Where's the warm grey? Yes, once you put it down, it's hard to find it again. Payne's grey. Right, I'm going to go in with the warm grey six and I'm just going to add a little bit more to this eye. And at the bottom, I want to make it a little bit bigger. That's better. And then pulling that part out, a little bit of a point. Darkening up the top. That's much better. Isn't it funny? Just a tiny little bit. And it does make a big difference. Darkening up around here with this warm grey six. Adding to these little sections. We could tinker with it forever, as you can with any drawing, really. So I just want to map in most of the face today, darkening up this little line here, darkening up under here, darkening up this bit. I think we need to go in with a little bit more, just adding to that little ruffle. 
I might go in with the burnt ochre again, really nice colour, just to add a little bit more here, glazing there, a little bit more at the top, especially to the edges. This part here, softening around the eye. Adding a little bit more to the edges, little scribbly lines. I think we're not kind of going to know how dark to go on this face until we've got the rest of the chest in. But I think, I think that's looking okay for now. So we've got most of the head in. I think it's looking okay. Usually we need to tinker with it a little bit at the... Um, at the end complete end of a drawing because then you start to see it all coming together let's see the difference between so there's that one and that one so this one is a bit lighter and i don't know if i prefer it i probably do a little bit um, so it just goes to show i went in a little bit darker to begin with um, it's a bit lighter but it all depends on the end because if you don't put the shadows in where they need to be then it doesn't look particularly 3D. It can actually look a little bit flat on the paper. And so sometimes you do need to go a little bit darker than you feel comfortable with. How are you getting on? Do you have any questions about what we've done so far on the face? Um, I would love, love, love to see yours. Um, Post them in the group if you do feel comfortable. And don't forget your hashtag Robin. Robin1 for today. Um, I'm just going to turn you back to me. If that's okay. I've got my glasses on. So take a step back so you can actually see me. And I'm not right on top of you. How are you getting on? I really hope you enjoyed that. I hope you picked up some tips and techniques. I hope you don't feel overwhelmed. Please don't feel overwhelmed. It's just... A bit of practice, um, a bit of experience in knowing your colours, and I think that's always a good thing to get to know your colours. Um, the lovely Emma Kerridge from the Colour Pencil Shop, I know a lot of you buy your colour pencils from there. She's got these brilliant downloads on there that you can colour in, you can make these little colour swatches of your, these are the polychromos, which are my favourite. And I've gone light and then I've kind of burnished towards the bottom so that you can really see the the spectrum of these beautiful colors and they're a good reference to look back on if you're trying to pick colors and things i use this all the time i was going to put it frame it and put it on my wall because i think that would be nice as well but um i just keep referring to it when i'm picking colors and you start to get to know them really well i think there's so many pencils out there that it's tempting to buy all of them because they just look amazing. You get that kind of magpie syndrome where you just want to buy everything that you see. And I completely understand that. But I do feel that that sometimes leads to overwhelm and there's just too many things to choose from. And you, you, you've just got too many options. And, and sometimes that can stop you in your tracks if you feel overwhelmed. So um, if you're starting new, if you're starting out, then I really would recommend either the Prismacolors, which are um, a much cheaper option. I wouldn't say they're the professional pencils because they're not as light fast as the Fabricar style polychromos. But to start off for a cheaper version, if you don't want to spend lots of money on the polys to begin with, they're a really good option. But if you do want to invest and you think this is a hobby that you're going to carry forward and you're going to be doing a lot, then the polychromos, I started with a 36 box and that actually lasted me quite a long time I didn't go for all of the colors I just worked with what I had and I built up gradually it's not something that you need to do you don't need that specific color um or oh, watch from the beginning and have a go brilliant polychrome is definitely fave I definitely agree I think they're just a brilliant all-rounder and they're great for detail. You've got 120 colours, which is um, amazing eventually. Uh, you, they're, they're really hard, they're great quality. If you drop them, they don't break all the way down through the middle like other pencils do. Um, what else is great about them? They're just amazing. They're just really well made and beautiful. Um, oh, I'm so glad you've, you've learnt a lot, Mary. 
I'm so glad. Um, anyone have any questions about today or about tomorrow? Um, can we just try later? Oh, good. Hope you're feeling better, Nicola. I know you've been really poorly. Um, so I just want to talk briefly about the membership while I have you here, if that's okay. I've actually opened the doors to the new membership today, the Joy of Drawing. I'm trying to show you as much as I can during these workshops um, because if the membership isn't for you or you're not ready, then that's absolutely fine. But what I do want is to be able to, for you to have things to take away straight away to start implementing into your drawings so that you can see a change, notice a difference. Um, I really want to encourage you and that's what the big group is all about. So by no means is it um, something that you definitely have to do, uh, but the benefits of it, um, and I hope my members, current members will agree, is that you have this sense of community, you have this sense of having a tribe that understand you, that share your interests in this lovely colour pencil journey as artists. We all tend to be a little bit similar. So uh, I open the art, the Mindful Artist membership, it's an art and mindset membership, which the doors are actually open to that as well, because I wanted to integrate art and mindset. I think they work beautifully together. I'm a qualified hypnotherapist and so I bring some of that into it as well and we have interactive sessions for a month, so once a week, um, art clinic for critique um, and chat and a little bit of help on current pieces. We have our draw alongs which is once a month on a Saturday and we have hypnotherapy but I know that not everyone has the time or, or the need or the want to have these interactive sessions at the moment and so um, I've had quite a lot of questions and asks about opening a just a drawing tutorial membership um, so that's what I've done I've opened this it's called the joy of drawing and it's going to be uh, tutorials every month but I'm going to be uploading them weekly as I do in my art and mindset membership because I think it's just nice to have it bite-sized because I want to encourage regular creative practice. I think it's just so crucial to well-being. Everyone is creative in their own way, no matter what they do. And I think we need to be able to let it out. And we also need to be able to focus on something that isn't the rat race that is all around us at the moment. Having a creative, regular creative practice has so many benefits. I could list like a hundred um, physically, definitely but mentally too which I think now more than ever is so important to be able to look after our mental health um, to have people there to support you and that's what these memberships are about I want to be able to help you as much as I can I want to be able to encourage you I want to lift you up if you're feeling low um, you know I want to help as much as I can and these are the best ways at the moment that I feel that I can do that to be able to get to know you to reach out and for you to have these creative projects there for guided by me, you know, I, I'm filming and I'm talking at the same time. So you see my thought process, you see the mistakes I make and what I do to try and rectify them if possible. Um, but mainly just having someone there to be able to support you uh, when you need it. There's the ability to ask questions in the membership in Kajabi. I'm also gonna be opening up a uh, VIP members for the joy of drawing facebook group so it's going to be a safe space for you to share your work and ask questions and i'm also going to be doing a monthly q a as well which is going to be live in the group i might pop in every now and again in the group as well um, just to say hello and to check in and see how everyone is um, but the robin that we've been drawing today like i said i filmed the whole thing it's about six hours so obviously i can't show absolutely everything and i'm obviously answering questions as well um, during these workshops so if you did want a more um a more structured and a much more complete version of this robin and holly then i've put that in the membership um, as a little bonus to get you started, there's also another project in there in coloured pencils on drafting film, which you might find interesting, a lovely hedgehog. So I put that in to cover you for the next month. So you've got some lovely projects. They're all broken down into bite-sized chunks, about an hour, an hour and a quarter, a bit like today. Um, 
but if you do want to do more then they just roll over so you can do hours and hours generally the tutorials are going to be about five six seven eight hours long depending on what we draw uh, felt nice again to draw after a small gap had a difficult time picking up pencils though drawing is something i love yeah this session is what I needed. Oh, I'm so, so glad for you, Nisha. Massive thank you. Oh, my absolute pleasure. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I love talking to everybody. And um, I just love to talk about coloured pencils and pencils in general. I think they are so amazing that I want as many people <laughs> to benefit from them as possible. So the Joy of Drawing membership is now open. Uh, you can click on the link that I've put in the description to check out the information page to find out a little bit more about it. Um, the doors are going to be open for a week and then they're going to be closing again. So please don't miss out on that. And the Art and Mindset membership is also open if you wanted to join that. I only open that a few times a year. So this is your opportunity to sign up for that if you want a little bit more of the interactive sessions and a little bit more support. So there are kind of two levels of support if you just want the drawing tutorials then the joy of drawing is for you if you want a little bit more interaction and the mindset work as well then the mindful artist is for you so i've sent you the links in the description please go and check them out if it sounds like something you might be interested in don't forget to love or like this video um, so it goes out to more people in the group because facebook doesn't always let everyone in the group see things um, comment if you can you'll get entered into the prize draw and um, share your work with the hashtag robin1 for today and i really look forward to having a look and see the beautiful creations that you make and how different we all are different styles and the same reference photo the same pencil same materials how we can create something slightly different i just find it really fascinating thanks sam helpful looking forward to tomorrow i uh, fantastic um for the members that are already in the mindset mindful artist membership it's all a bit of a mouthful um the robin is now published as well for you so if you want like i said a much more um complete tutorial without the kind of questions in between then it's up today i've published it now so it's ready for you um, oh, hello, Mark. Lovely to see you. So nice to see some familiar faces. Um, so lovely to see you. Right. I think that's it for today. I don't think I've forgotten anything. If I have, I'll just post in the group. Um, again, let me know if you have any questions. And I really look forward to tomorrow where we're going to be diving into the wing and all of those difficult but interesting, don't panic, uh, textures of the wing no overwhelm, no pressure, uh, keeping it fun, keeping it simple. Um, you've seen it, Lillian. Fantastic. It's in. The, oh, good. I'm glad it's actually live in the membership. So I put them in both uh, so you can get cracking on that straight away if you want to. Yep. Tomorrow on to the wing, a little bit more of the body if we can. And then on Thursday, we're going to jump into possibly finishing a few bits off on the robin. I don't know if we're going to get it finished. We'll do as much as I can. Oh, dear feathers. Don't panic, Anna. Don't panic. I'm going to keep it simple. Um, and, and then we'll move on to the holly and berries. And I think that will be interesting because it's about getting them to look kind of 3D and juicy. It's a very different texture to the feathers. And I have really changed the way that I look at things and the way that I draw and how to keep it simple to be able to kind of explain it to other people so i've really kept it simple with the berries and the leaves and although there are definitely better ones out there and as i practice i'm sure that i will improve because that's just what happens um, i've really kept it as simple as possible instead of choosing six or seven reds which i would have done before i've used two and that's it um, and so I've broken it down for you. I've practiced and this seems to be a really good method to use. Keep it simple um, and keep it more fun. So don't panic about the feathers. Um, I really look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Same time, 10.30, live in the group. If I don't pop up immediately, I will be there. 
um, I will be trying my best to get on or I am there and you might just need to refresh a little bit. So I really look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I hope you have a fantastic day. This will be available in the group to watch on replay. If you're watching on the replay, please do say hello and comment and please do enter yourself into the competition for some Christmas goodies coming your way. Lots of love to you. I've really enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye for now.